Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I am your gaming monk for the evening. So, for the longest time, there would always be people talking about how, how you'd adapt this or that IP into tabletop. Especially since, in those days, getting a established IP to allow for adaptations was a, ra was a rarity. I mean, you'd get, maybe you'd get a Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or Star Trek. Um, but beyond that, not all that much. And especially when it came to video games, since there's still a culture of... I don't want to say gatekeeping, but it's the closest thing I can find. In regard to using video games in tabletop, especially tabletop RPGs. I've talked about this plenty of times in the past, and the grognards who insist that there's this purity line between tabletop RPGs and video games when that hasn't been the case for decades. Because apparently we all forgot about the gold box um, computer games that TSR was, pub was publishing under a different label. But then, then this particular thing drops. And a lot of people had commented on it, and I said that I would make a video on it. Granted, I'm making a video a few days late, and everybody's already said their piece, but better late than never. So Simon, who is a well-established board game manufacturer, although they've been falling on some questionable times, which I will get into shortly, had announced that they will be set to adapt Assassin's Creed for tabletop RPG. This was published about five days ago at the time of this recording. Quote, Simon is proud to announce that Assassin's Creed, Ubisoft's video game series that celebrates its 15th anniversary this year, is coming to the world of tabletop role-playing games for the first time via Simon's publishing imprint, Guillotine Press. I know it's pronounced guillotine, but I don't care. The licensing agreement will give players exciting new ways to explore the vast world and time periods of the video games as they enter the Animus, searching for long-lost secrets and pieces of Eden in their long fight against the Templars. Now, it's overseen by Francesco Neptello, who has who does have a few who does have a few RPG um, entries in his background, as well as pe as well as people playing it, and the fact that it's talking about people playing as as, as descendants, modern day characters whose ancestors were. Um, Brotherhood Assassins of Old. Now, obviously, there's not there's not a whole lot of details aside from the fact that they plan on doing pre-order in 2023. So I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't come out until Q3 2024 at the earliest. But if I'm being honest, I remember when on Geek Watch, we did the Pick 5 Challenge, and Assassin's Creed was brought up as as one particular entry. And I had said that if I if given the choice, I would not do a Assassin's Creed TTRPG. Would I do a histo would I do a historical Assassin's Creed adjacent one that ta that takes place during certain time periods? Maybe, but. The big pro the big problem is the protagonist issue of everybody's gonna everybody's going to be an assassin. How do you make sure that everyone stands out within that? There are ways to do it, obviously, but there are some significant questions on how you're gonna pull that off with some with in this approach. Now I know because of the because of things like the Power Rangers RPG that I should be cynical about this, but I save cynicism for other content creators. I'm certainly an asshole, but I'm not a but I never want to be a cynic. It's just not my style. I know I say that a lot, but it's the case. What I what I what does raise my eyebrow, however, is Simon being involved because for one, this will be their first foray into role-playing games. For as long as they've been around, to my knowledge, they have only done board games. And for a while, they were putting out board games based on IPs fairly regularly 
that were of a significantly high quality, and even I had sung their praises a few years ago. But in recent years, they have not done themselves any favors with how some of their games have been have been glorified reskins, or in other cases, they've just been really, really, really bad at communicating with their audience, especially on Kickstarter. Um, the King of Average has several videos covering this covering this issue, and he's no stranger to the particularities of how Simone wants to communicate with their audience. Especially since the only way to get a comment in with in with them is to is to back their Kickstarter at one of the lower levels. But the fact that they go for long stretches without proper communication. Or in, or in some cases, communicate in all the wrong ways, that does make me a little bit concerned on how this is going to play out. I don't want this to fail, but I also am not entirely sure if Simon are the right people to do it. Now, yeah, the, pe the person who's running their brand new imprint has some experience, but a lot of the experience that I saw didn't lend itself all that well to the kind of game that I think people would be expecting with a name like Assassin's Creed. Now granted, the Assassin's Creed name has been mud has been muddled ever since... Oh, I want to say Unity was when the cracks really started to show with how much of a disaster Unity was, and in subsequent years they've done themselves absolutely no favors. That much is very clear. But the best way to describe the problem of having everyone being the assassin is imagine a Star Wars game where everyone is Luke Skywalker. Or everyone is that kind of Jedi. That's not going to create a very good dynamic. You need variety in character creation. Even if you're just moving around a, f a few numbers or going completely lo-fi like 2400 or Caltrop Core. It's important that people are able to personalize their characters. The other issue is when so many of the missions are going to revolve around assassination, how do you make campaigns unique? Um, again, I don't want a, a Assassin's Creed TTRPG to fail. I want to see how they would pull it off. But I'm a little bit cautious that they'll even be able to pull it off in any, in, in any interesting way or any way that allows the pl allows fans of the games to carry that same fantasy. I've talked a lot about class fantasy in games, and it's a feel that's very important, and I would argue even underrated, in game design. Especially when you're designing archetypes, whether they be classes or something else. If a class is meant to be the Conan XP in a fantasy game, a lot of the mechanics should reflect that. There's not one way to reflect it, but it should reflect it in some way. Even if it can't be done in a one-for-one -one basis, because, hey, there's only one Conan. So, I'll probably follow up on this once I have more information on how the game is actually going to play, and whether or not I would consider it for a musing, if not a full-on review. But, hey, it wouldn't be the first time that Ubisoft decided to disappoint me. Stay frosty.